Hello, my lovely students. Uh, how you doing? I hope that you are doing uh, good and okay during these uh, hard times. Um, I want to say something quickly, but I want to say it. I really miss you guys. Uh, I really miss you with all my heart. Uh, it's been kind of a difficult time, you know, for everybody. But uh, I really hope that we get the chance to see each other again, you know. Uh, I don't know if that is going to happen, but I, I really have faith in that, you know. Um, from now on, I'm going to make some videos for you uh, because we are going to start the, the, the sexiest topic in the semester, as I told you before in class, but as well is the, the, the most difficult one that is symbolic logic, okay? Uh, in this occasion, we are going to start in the symbolization of uh, propositions, okay? Now, uh, the process that uh, we are going to in the way that we're going the way that we're going to work is uh, first of all you read the working guide so if you are seeing this video and if you haven't uh, read uh, the working guide yet please uh, stop it go and uh, study and read the working guide and then you can come with me and join me and, and study symbolic logic really fun now uh, you read first of all the the this the, the working guide then you see this video uh, we I, 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 I give you the explanations that are given already in the working guide so we maybe I can clarify some doubts that you already had in the previous reading and then once you already read the working guide you saw the video you can answer the signature okay or the the following exercises uh, that is going to be the process or uh, our method to work in this uh, virtual way. And finally, uh, at the end of the process, I'm thinking that we can have at the end of the week, maybe on Friday, a little uh, meeting, a little video call in which uh, besides of saying hi, that for me that is really, really important, we can uh, solve any doubts that maybe you can have. I know that this topic the, these topics can get uh, confusing uh, for you, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm here for you. That is my, my work, you know. Uh, I'm really sorry if the screen is kind of uneven. I, I didn't want to have uh, the light reflection on my marker board, so I improved uh, two kind of uh, columns of books. So please be patient with me, okay? So, uh, symbolization of uh, propositions, okay? Uh, as uh, supposedly you read in the, in the working guide, uh, the symbolic logic is the branch of logic that uh, tries to formalize or symbolize a, a natural language into symbols, okay? And we are going to uh, formalize that natural language, language in order to... Uh, find a uh, validation for the arguments, okay? We're going to explain that step by step, okay? When we see, uh, when we see the truth tables. Uh, but before that, uh, that is the main distinction, okay? The distinction between the natural language and the symbolic or formal language. When we talk about the symbolic la language, formal language is like a synonym, okay? Symbolic or formal language is the same, okay? So, for example, natural language uh, is any language that we use in our daily lives. For example, uh, Lopez Gatel is un crack. Uh, or I, don't, I don't know. I mean, we can discuss that uh, later, but Lopez Gatel is a crack. Uh, es un crack, okay? Uh, I miss my students and uh, Gem La Filosofi. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, different languages here. Uh, English, uh, Spanish, uh, English, and French, you know. Uh, natural language is the, the way the, 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 the language is spoken. It could be in the different languages of the communities, obviously, you know. And it's the way we talk uh, in our daily lives, as I already said. Now, in the symbolic or formal language, we are turning these propositions into symbols, okay? Uh, well, these symbolizations are not related precisely with these statements, but uh, in your daily life, you're not, you don't say 
A, a conjunction B, or you don't say to your boyfriend or your girlfriend, hey, H, a, exclusive disjunction P, conditional R. You don't say that to anyone, you know? Now, uh, this symbolic language uh, will formalize or symbolize this uh, normal uh, natural language. Now, as you can see, uh, for example, uh, Suppose that uh, actually the first statement is going to be okay. Lopez Gatel es un crack can be uh, symbolized with the letter A. Okay. That uh, is valid if even if this uh, very same as, as statement, Lopez Gatel es un crack, is written in English. If you say uh, Lopez Gatel is a crack, is a, a really good, uh, a great scientist, the the letter A is valid as well as a symbolization for this statement. In other words, uh, these uh, symbols, uh, letters, are valid for any possible language. Spanish, French, uh, German, uh, English. We have a universal and a unique language for the maybe several languages of the natural language, okay? So we are going to symbolize these kind of languages into a universal language, okay? And that is really important because these uh, statements that are, that are in, in natural language can be vague, can be confusing, and we are uh, seeking all the contrary in the formal language. We are seeking exactitude, we are seeking uh, validation, okay? We are seeking uh, the validation of arguments, okay? That uh, is a universal way, okay? And remember that that is one of the main attempts of the logic, okay? Okay, before, uh, before we study how to symbolize or formalize uh, the, the natural language, we need to understand the nature of the propositions, okay? Well, uh, you are familiar with this already, you know? Remember the categorical propositions. Remember that a proposition is called uh, properly a proposition because it has the structure, uh, the subject term plus the verb plus the predicate term, okay? If the proposition doesn't have uh, this structure of the subject term, the verb and the predicate term, we cannot say that that is a, a proposition or a judgment. We can remember that when we uh, were seeing this uh, mental or type of thoughts, we said something like the judgment was a, the, the, a mental operation that affir affirms or denies uh, something about uh, something, okay? So you cannot affirm or deny something if you don't have this structure, okay? For example, uh, my red chair, I don't know, the, I know that this is a mess, okay? But I'm, I'm going to explain this. For example, my red chair. My red chair is not properly uh, a proposition. Why? Because it doesn't have this structure, the subject term, the verb, and the predicate term. The only statements that can be stated as true or false are the propositions, and therefore the, pro the, the, the statements or the, the sentences that have this uh, structure. For example, if I say my red chair, is that true or false? Actually, it is neither true nor false. Why? Because it's my red chair. I'm not affirming or denying something about that. Now, if I say my red chair is broken, I'm affirming that my red chair is broken. So that could be true or false, yes? If I only say the red chair or my red chair is just the red chair. I'm not affirming or denying something. When you affirm or deny something, you have the proposition and then that could be true or false. Okay, that is really important and, and please, this is really, really important because uh, it's, it's, it's going to be uh, of capital importance for the uh, truth tables, okay? Because only these kind of statements can be stated as true or false, okay? If I say, for example, in the working guide, I the example that I gave you was the red cup of coffee. It's the same stuff. The red cup of coffee 
is just the red cup of coffee. It's not sense saying that that is true or false. It's just the red cup of coffee. But if you say the red cup of coffee is on my table, well, that could be true or false. In my case, it's false because I don't know where is my red cup of coffee. Uh, okay, now, now, if you understood this correctly, we can go to the other part of the marker board. We have uh, several kinds of propositions, okay? Remember, propositions, uh, it has this structure and it could be true or false, okay? Uh, remember the syllogism that we loved during all the semester. Uh, uh, all men are good, he carries a man, he carries good. You have a syllogism and you have three statements. Each statement, each statement can be true or false, okay? But well, just, just to remember that, okay? We are not uh, talking about, uh, in this moment, about syllogisms, okay? We have, for example, the simple statement and the compound statement, uh, and uh, finally we have the logic and connectives, okay? We're going to, to see those uh, step by step. The simple statement doesn't have or doesn't contain any logical connectives. That implies or that requires that I talk about what a logical connective is. A logical connective is a word, uh, is a linker, is a word that can join or link uh, two or more uh, simple statements, okay? Uh, for example, take a look of this uh, statement. Uh, Tommy is a logic student, okay? Tommy, subject term, uh, is the verb, and the verb to be, and finally, a logic student predicate term. One question, does it have the required structure for being a proposition? Yes, it does. So, this is a simple statement. We don't have a logical connective. Now, see the next uh, kind of uh, propositions, the compound statements. Those contain uh, at, least, uh, at least one logical connective. For example, Tommy is a logic student, okay? Simple statement, but if you add a logical connective, if you add a linker, for example, the word and, that's, that is going to change immediately into a compound statement, immediately, okay? That is a, 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 an statement that is more like, more than one, a, one simple statement. So, Tommy is a logic student and Marie is a philosophy student. So, Tommy subject term is verb, a logic student predicate term, okay? The first part of the sentence and the first simple statement. Okay, I'm going to write the first simple statement, number one, okay? Then you have the logical connective that is a conjunction. Uh, I'm not going to write anything uh, yet. And then you have, after the logical connective, the second simple statement. The second simple statement is, Marie is a philosophy student, okay? Marie's subject term, uh, the verb to be, uh, is, and finally the predicate term, a philosophy student. Does it have uh, the same instruction for being a proposition? Yes, it does. Therefore, this is a proposition. As you can see, Tommy is a logic student, and as well, Marie is a, a philosophy student, can be true or false, okay? That's the reason we need to uh, 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 explicit and, and, uh, and make the example of this uh, previous part. Now, uh, as you can see, well, I think that is kind of clear, you know? Tommy is a logic student, the first one, and the second simple statement that joined with a logical connective uh, with the first one uh, makes the compound uh, statement is Marie is a philosophy, philosophy student. Marie is a philosophy student is the second simple statement. Together, uh, linked by the logical connective, give us the compound statement, okay? Now, this is really important. I, I wrote some uh, a brief note in your working guide. Uh, if you have a simple statement such as, for example, Tommy is a logic student, okay? If you deny, or if you write a negation, in other words, to this statement, that changes automatically into a compound statement immediately, immediately. And therefore, 
uh, Tommy is not a logic student, is now considered a compound statement, okay? That is really important. If I ask you in the exam, uh, please tell me if this statement is simple or, or if this statement is compound. Oh, uh, Tommy is not a logic student. It seems to be a simple statement, actually, because it has this, this structure. But at the moment that you add the negation, the negation ca uh, counts as a logical connective, okay? And why? Because it is changing the meaning, completely the meaning, to the opposite one of the statement, okay? And you are getting actually the, 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 the contrary uh, meaning. In other words, and this is kind of tricky, you know, but try to follow me. Any affirmation contains itself uh, its negation. I know, philosophical stuff. We're going to talk about in the in the doubts, uh, no worries, okay? Uh, okay. Now, uh, as I said, uh, the logical connectives are linkers uh, for simple statements and together they form a compound statement, you know? Uh, these logical connectives can be represented, can be symbolized or formalized in the next uh, way. Okay, actually you have this very same chart in your working guide. So please uh, try to see that again. If you haven't, again, if you haven't read yet the working guide, please read first the working guide and then you can be with me and the and, and cotorreo, okay? Uh, okay, so we have... Uh, the first logical connective is the conjunction. Uh, they ha it has these um, symbols. We are going to, to use the circled one, okay? Uh, you probably know this one, but we are going to uh, use this convention, this convention, okay? This circled uh, symbol, okay? Uh, and uh, the natural language, okay? The natural language is, is the way that you will, that you would hear uh, these logical connectives in uh, the daily life um, language, okay? So these lines represent uh, where the words supposedly are, you know? For example, uh, Ricardo and Pancracio are logic students, okay? Uh, Ricardo and Pancracio, uh, I don't know, uh, yes, Ricardo and Pancracio are uh, logic students. That is the same that saying, Ricardo is a logic student and, uh, what I, did I say, uh, Pancracio is a logic student, okay? Uh, that is going to be represented, this word, the, the, the word that is going to be changed into a symbol are these ones. If you see these words and if you want to symbolize them, the way to do it is through these symbols, okay? The symbol for the word and is going to be this one. The symbol for the word or is going to be this one, that this is an inclusive disjunction, okay? Remember that the, the, both the disjunction and the conditional, supposedly we already studied them, okay? Now, uh, we have two kinds of disjunction, this, the inclusive disjunction and the, the exclusive disjunction. We are going to represent the inclusive disjunction, disjunction with this kind of B, okay? And this represents or symbolizes the word or. Ricardo or Pancracio are logic students. That is the same as saying Ricardo is a logic student or uh, Pancracio is a logic student, okay? This classic disjunction has a little uh, difference and we're going to see this uh, uh, deep in a, in a deeper way when we study the truth tables, okay? Wait a moment. But the exclusive disjunction is the same symbol as the inclusive one, but with a line uh, uh, here, okay, so uh, this is going to symbolize uh, these kind of uh, words, either this or that. Either uh, Ricardo is a logic student or Pancracio is a logic student, okay? Uh, we're going to see why it changes, okay? Don't worry. Uh, the conditional is going to be, uh, is gonna be, is going to be represented with uh, this arrow and as you probably remember, symbolizes this kind of uh, statement. If uh, Ricardo is a logic student, then Pancracio is a logic student, okay? Uh, the B conditional is going to be represented with 
this kind of double arrow, okay? And uh, it says if and only if. Ricardo is a logic student if and only if uh, Pancrasi is a logic student, okay? I'm using the same example in order to, to be clear with you. And finally, the negation, okay? Uh, you can, well, the, the symbol is this, this one, I don't know how to explain it, just that. <laughs> and, uh, oh, my laugh, okay. Uh, and uh, it, in this case, it will be neither this or that. Neither Ricardo is a logic student nor uh, Pancrasio, what, what? Pancrasio is a logic student. And you can deny both of them uh, in a separate way. For example, uh, Ricardo is not a logic student and uh, Pancrasio is not a logic student, okay? And uh, those uh, will, uh, will, would be the symbolization for the logical connections, okay? And finally, we reached uh, the most important part of the video that is uh, properly the symbolization of propositions, okay? As simple as that. The main task and the main purpose of today's topic is to symbolize propositions, as simple as that. And I wrote uh, two main recommendations for that. And please, please, please always follow these recommendations written, okay, please. The first one is uh, what is going to be symbolized or formalized. Remember that symbolized or formalized uh, are synonyms in this context, uh, are the simple statements, okay? Normally we are going to give, uh, give, give them a, a capital letters from the alphabet, okay? These letters are going to be called uh, variables and uh, we're going to use these letters in order to represent the simple statements, okay? The statement that remember that, remember that can be true or false, the, statement that, the statements that have uh, the structure of the subject term, the verb and the predicate term, okay? This is really important and I'm really sorry for saying this again, what we symbolize through capital letters from the alphabet that from the alphabet that are con that are that are going to be called variables are the simple 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 statements. Okay. Therefore, if we want to symbolize a compound statement, we need to symbolize first the simple statements and the logical connective. How can we symbolize the logical connective? Well, you already saw that in the previous chart and supposedly in your walking guide. And uh, how can we symbolize the simple statement? Well, we're going to see how. For example, uh, the first example is René Descartes is French, okay? One question, simple or compound statement? That's right, simple statement. So we have René Descartes, that is the subject term, as simple as that, is is the verb, and French is the predicate term. This, is this statement uh, true or false? Actually, the, the statement is true, okay? It could be true or false, yes, it could be true or false. Now, we have a simple statement. We don't have, do we have any logical connection? Uh, connective, sorry. Do we have, for example, a conjunction, a disjunction, uh, a conditional? Do we have something like that? No, we don't have something like that. Therefore, we have just a simple statement. So. Let, let it be like A represent René Descartes. Da, 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 is French. It's the same. It's French. So the letter A, the variable A, represents René Descartes is French. We are using only one letter or, or one variable to represent the simple statement as I said before. Therefore, the final symbolization is going to be A. That's all for this statement, okay? Really, really simple, right? Piece of cake. Now, in the second one, René Descartes is French and uh, European. One question, simple or compound? Exactly, that is compound. Why? Because we have a logical connective here. I'm going to write that in another, with other uh, color. We have a logical connective here that is a conjunction, okay? So as you can see, therefore we have one simple statement and two simple statements, and we are going to rewrite them in order to be clearer in this, okay? 
let it be like A represents René Descartes is French. Yes. And let's say that B represents the same René Descartes. Well, the same statement, well, the second one. René Descartes is European. Sorry for my letter, I'm writing, you know. Now, uh, as you can see, in this part of the sentence is not like the same like in here, but it's actually like contained in this part. It's the same part. If you say René Descartes is French and René Descartes is European, you are saying the same stuff as if you are saying René Descartes is French and European, okay? So we have two proposed variables for this, okay? A and B. This represents A and this represents B. We have already the symbolization for the first simple statement and the symbolization for the second simple statement. Do we know what is the symbolization for the conjunction? Yes, indeed, it's this one. Therefore, the final result of this is A conjunction B. As simple as that, my lovely friends. And finally, two more examples, okay? Uh, actually, I forgot to write uh, that the first example was um, a simple statement, I'm really sorry, and then the second example was a compound statement, okay? Uh, as you well, we're going to see that, but uh, just take that in consideration, okay? The example number one, that uh, Descartes is a French, René Descartes is French, remember that that is a simple statement, okay? I'm really sorry for uh, forgetting that, okay? But uh, in this case, I'm going to make the, the complete exercise that actually you need to, set, to do the same stuff in your uh, signature, okay? So we have example number three, René Descartes is not French. One question, simple or compound? That's right, that is a compound statement. The reason, because we have a negation here, okay? As simple as that. If we have a negation, remember that that turns automatically into a, a compound statement. Therefore, uh, in other words, take a, a look of this. You cannot do this. Imagine that, let's say that A represents René Descartes is not French. And therefore you say, ah, yeah, my final symbolization is simple A. That is not only uh, wrong, but it's really gross. It really, if a, a logician, a, a, a person that lives about this and, and really loves logic, uh, he or she will judge you, okay? It's kind of gross, it's kind of, I don't know, it's like, it's like, oh man, you didn't do that, please. You cannot do that, okay? How it will be, it will be, you don't write the negation here. You write the uh, statement in an affirmative way. René Descartes is French. Why? Because the negation itself is a logical connective. And as a logical connective, it has its proper symbolization. What is that symbol? Well, this one, okay? That is the correct answer, okay? Negation of A, as simple as that. If you write the negation here, you are completely wrong and, you, and that is gross. That is, oh, don't do that, man, oh, come on. And this is a compound statement, okay? And finally, if René Descartes is French, then he is European. As you can see, this is as well a, a compound statement, and we have if and then. In natural language, uh, you, you read the words if and then, and that uh, gives us, as a result, the logical connective from the conditional, okay? So, in other words, uh, let's say that, uh, let, be, uh, let it be A represents René Descartes, is French, that this part, this part of here is going to be letter A, 
okay? And let's say that B represents René Descartes is European, okay? That is this part. As you can see, we already symbolized this uh, simple statement, we already symbolized the second simple statement in these two parts, letter A and letter B. Do we have a, a, symbol, a symbol for the conditional? Yes, we do indeed, my lovely students, yes, we do. That is the arrow, okay? And where is going to be the arrow? This is a, a common mistake, okay? Please uh, be careful with this. You don't write two arrows in this sense, you don't write one arrow here and another arrow there. No, no, my, no, my lovely students, no, don't do that. You only need to write the arrow in the middle one. In the middle one is linking the first part A and the second part B. Therefore, the final symbolization of this one uh, would be A conditional B. That represents, in other words, if René Descartes is French, then he is European. Is A conditional B. As simple as that. As you can see, you can have a lot of combinations. You can uh, change this and imagine that you are denying this. You can say, oh, A conditional negation of B. But, okay, wait a moment. We're going to see plenty of those exercises, okay? Uh, I'm really happy to, well, to try to talk into you again uh, and really miss you, as I already said. And please take care. Uh, we are going to see each other in the video call. Take care. Goodbye.